Good day guys and welcome to the channel. Today's video, you're gonna wanna hang around for this. Let's go. All right, guys, this is Kim. Uh, we've got a little bit of history. We go back, way back to the mid 80s, I think, and you look just about as tall as you did back then too. make me look like a, a shrimp here. But uh, uh, he's got some really interesting cars and some stories to go along with it. Um, first off, I think we can do is start with the uh, two beauties you've got sitting in front of us here, Grand Prix. Let's take a look at them and maybe we'll start with the, uh, the uh, first one that you bought. Uh, you were saying you bought this one in 1984 1984 yeah, so this this, is my this was when we were in high school yeah so yeah. my uh, first car ever was a couple of years earlier was a 70 le mans i uh, remember that car 350 black yeah, yeah yeah and then i had a uh a 66 gto which was nice it was a 389 it wasn't slow but then my third car was the uh, 428 ho grand prix wow so that was a, that oh, was that's a, a 428 no yeah kidding. that was head and shoulders over the uh the gto and obviously the le mans right and it had a lot more options to it and it had posi and uh that was that, that was a great car and um you know i i came close to getting into trouble with it a few times but uh <laughs> yeah I bet. well I, I i remember you actually getting in a little trouble with the le mans once i did too. but yeah, yeah. The, the potential was a lot greater with this one yeah so, um, <laughs> right on anyways so as much as i like the le mans and the gto i think that's you know once i had this car i realized that the grand prix was really what i liked the best and i've, I've had a lot of gm products but uh you know pontiac has is, is always been my favorite and uh and, and this car, um, I, I had it for several years. I, I painted it once and painted it black and, and done some different things that uh, I later realized I shouldn't have done. And uh, <laughs> in all honesty, uh, in 1990, I pulled out the 428 HO and the Posi and somebody else wanted to buy it off me. And uh, they had a 400 that they were gonna put in it. And I had other Grand Prix at the time, which had Posi and power windows and a number of different options. So I sold it in 1990. And uh, I had some other Grand Prix which were nice along the way. And uh, I, I picked up the, the one on the right in 1998. And uh, in the early 2000s, uh, I ran into the individual who I'd sold this car to. And, and between the time I'd sold it and the time that I ran into him, a lot of things for information became available on the internet and where you could order the, the, how the car was originally equipped and all that. And I found out that this first Grand Prix that I had was an executive car for GM Oshawa. Oh. And it was the most highly equipped car that I had ever seen out of all the Grand Prix. It's got a little speed minder and the speedometer and all that other stuff. So I ran into the individual and he says the car has been sitting in his mom's garage for 15, 18 years no and he kidding. hadn't touched it at all. And he says, if you want to just give me my money back, I'll sell it back to you. No kidding. So I, uh, I said, absolutely. I was there the next day with the money in the trailer and I loaded it up on the trailer and he says, oh yeah, sorry. I never had a chance to change the ownership out of your name, Kim. Here's the ownership back. <laughs> so, um, he didn't, he didn't want to pay the HST. Well, uh, let's I think it was before they made the HST. I think it was just still oh, the regular yeah, sales tax. Yeah, so yeah. anyways, at that point in time, I did a full frame off restoration. A lot of work was done. Let, let's, let's talk about it as we're, as we're going around. Sure. Sure, keep going. I'm sorry to cut you off. So this is the beauty here. Yeah, so it's Espresso Brown is the, the color. This is a factory color. This is the original color the car came, and that's what we put it back to when, when it had the full restoration. Nice. Um, 428 HO, it doesn't have the same block in it as it did before, mm -hmm. but it's a, uh, it, 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 the right block just doesn't have the, the, the serial number in it. Um, it's got the long branch manifolds. Uh, original seats, original steering wheel, original radio. I mean, a, a ton of metal has been changed on the car, obviously. Uh, it came with the parchment color interior and the parchment color vinyl top. Mm -hmm. um, speed minder, which is rare. The, uh, the uh, sport steering wheel, which was an option upgrade. Um, uh -huh. and, and this is the only car I've seen. I know there's a few out there that has a little red light by the E in the fuel gauge. So when you're low, a light comes on. So that was something you see pretty common now for uh, new cars. But to, to have something come on in, in your dash back in late 60s or uh, uh, you know 50 years ago that was something that you didn't you don't yeah didn't see it very often back then right right but uh, tried to put this car back to uh, close to original there's a, a few things on there that uh, could be called over restored you know the base coat clear coat and polish the uh, uh, more paintwork under the hood and the bottom of the car would really be black but uh, 
you know, it's painted the same as, as you see the body and it's a base coat, clear coat when right. it was on the rotisserie. So maybe a little bit over restored there, but nice. I enjoy driving it. Uh, it, it's, it's friendly to drive and it's comfortable. So, um, it's absolutely it's got, it's gorgeous. Power, so. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, uh, can we get, look, take a look under the hood? Yes. <clears throat> what some people might not agree with what I did, but I did. Uh, they don't have to agree to it. It's your I, car. I took the air conditioning out of it. Because no, see, I don't agree now. Yeah. <laughs> Especially today. We are dying out here. It is extremely yeah, hot. It's, it's and one, uh, one of the we're going to try to get in the shade in a little bit mm -hmm. here because it's extremely hot. But uh, you took the air conditioning out. Yeah. When I had air conditioning in some of my other Grand Prix and other cars, you don't get it working very long and it's cold and then a line blows or something right, causes right. the the freon to leak out it's or a pain in the butt the one car i had that it worked the best i'd be overheating if it was hot enough to need the air and i turn the air on i'd be overheating the engine right, so right right i just said you know what i'm going to keep it out of this one i took it out we had to make some changes and uh, i just like more room under the hood so yeah no it looks beautiful so it's a 428 428 ho the difference between that was from the factory uh you know the biggest most obvious difference was the, the long branch manifolds if you look yeah, that's kind of like a factory header right and uh, i just run some stainless lines for transmission instead of the um the, the regular steel lines yeah uh, although i may be putting that back so nice. there's a few little things i need to do uh, one thing i added to the car uh, the the car had uh, no tachometer so I, I i did get the aftermarket hood tack i think back in the day you could get hood tacks from the factory on gto's yeah and if you wanted to get a, a, a hood tack for a grand prix they would just get a GTO tack and it would be like a dealer installed kind of item. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah, yeah. Um, added that and uh, that's something I like. That's a cool story though about uh, the guy that bought it and then many years later he gives it back to you. Same price. Well, didn't give it. He just well, gave I mean, me my money same back. Price, yeah. I haven't done anything with it. It sat in my mom's garage. Yeah, and, didn't uh, even have to change the ownership over. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, awesome. Uh, one little thing about 69 and 70. They look yeah. very similar, but... Uh, on the 69 you have the horizontal grill and on the 70 you have the uh the vertical grill. oh is that how you tell well that's okay i way. see mm -hmm. that's yeah. one way and the other thing is uh the fender lettering on the 69 uh you you've got that down there uh -huh. and on a 70 there's a uh, like a grill that has six studs and nuts on the inside and it says on a 70 it says grand prix here so there's two studs and nuts here on the 69 you had these these five bars on each side so okay. i think somebody said uh and they they count up all the studs and nuts and they said it's 29 uh studs and nuts on each side to put on these five pieces and in, in all the lettering and the emblem mm -hmm. and uh in 70 they said now we got six for the grill and we got two here so they went from 29 to 8 oh, so they saved some money did they well or save some time anyway. <laughs> yeah yeah very nice this is absolutely gorgeous yeah, there's Model J's and there's Model SJ's. Model SJ came with uh, the 428, or you could get a 428 HO. This uh, this is a J, but this, this is, is equipped with all the things that you could have had on a on an SJ. Gotcha. Um, as well as the other cars, a, a J. But uh, again, this is one of the more highly optioned 69 Grand Prix that I've seen. Obviously, the rarest and the most desirable are the four-speed. Yeah. Um, of the 69 Grand Prix was about 112,486, I think is the number. That was about four times how many they made in 68. In 68, it was still a big car. Um, if you ever watch the movie Goodfellas, yep. there's a scene where they, they throw that they kill a guy and they throw him in the trunk of a 68 Grand Prix. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember um, the scene. Yeah. But that was like a B body, a big, big car. And 69, they kind of made the GTO uh, a little longer, changed uh, some things, and. Uh, you know it's it, it kind of uh, they call it a g body but it's it's an a body with a few inches uh, extra length in the front so That's good anyway sales quadrupled pretty much in 69 and uh, out of 112,000 and changed um i think there was about 900 automatic cars with a 428 ho and this is one of them mm -hmm. and there were 676 manual cars but that included three speeds three speed manual uh four speed close ratio and four speed uh, wide ratio and I mean the, the rarest and the most desirable would be the the close ratio 428 four speed Grand Prix but uh, yeah um, short of that this is probably one of the, the more desirable ones and, yeah and again it's pretty highly optioned so sure sure okay Kim so now we'll move on to your second Grand Prix what what do we have here 
this is a well it's another 69 model j grand prix and um this has uh, got a, some interesting story to it as well um the uh, the first one that we talked about was the very first one i had and uh then between that and this car i had several other grand prix some were good drivers but not perfect and i really wanted something that i could put together that would be without flaws something that hadn't been in an accident or seen some bad bond or jobs or something like that so i was searching uh in the uh, probably 93 94 for a few years running ads looking in magazines to find a very clean rust free grand prix i didn't mind if it had no engine i didn't mind if the paint was faded i just wanted something that had the cleanest body yeah and i was looking around and uh you know i i had some responses from the south and arizona and whatnot but there were different issues with different cars such as well it's perfectly rust free but it has had an accident you should be able to fix it and i got a phone call and the phone call came from of all places sudbury oh and i thought there's no way there's a rust free car up in yeah, sudbury yeah yeah and the gentleman he uh, he told me that the car he was into sports cars small little two-door uh, I, I can't remember if it was mgs or triumphs or something like that but yeah. somebody had done this trade to him with money in this grand prix to get one of these small little sports cars so he wanted to sell it and he insisted it was rust free and we talked a few times on the phone and i was going to drive up and then i didn't and i thought there's just no way it's rust free uh, he insisted being oil sprayed anyways i finally changed my mind i called him back i said i'm going up i went up to sudbury and sure enough um it was absolutely rust free faded nice. paint it was dripping oil underneath the interior as he described it was absolutely mint so if you do take a look at the interior yep that is all original the way i got it as far as seats headliner and everything the only thing i did was put in a new carpet mm -hmm. and um, in any case we took this car apart it was stripped of bare metal and uh there were a couple of spots that did turn up that need, needed some minor welding, but for the most part, it was an absolute rust-free, straight, unmolested car. Nice. And, uh, and as opposed to the other Grand Prix, this one is one of the lowest option Grand Prix I've seen. Uh, very little. Yep. Um, power steering, power brakes. Uh, a lot of the northern cars got the electric rear defog, which this car has, but... Uh, I, I added some options. I put in factory gauges in the dash. I put in a tilt steering column in the uh, sport wheel. And it was a 400 car, which ran great. It had only 57,000 miles or so when I got it. But mm -hmm. I put in a, uh, I put in a, a, at first I put in a 428, then later we, uh, we built up a 455, 1974-55 with Edelbrock heads and a Victor intake. And, a fair bit of work in it and and that's what's in here now and let's take a look at that while yeah. we're uh, talking about it oh there we go yeah i, I judging by the sound uh, i heard it when you pulled it up here uh i knew there's something going on in here so it's a uh 455 74 you said yeah 1970 455 70 455 okay gotcha yeah, it's uh it's board 60 over mm -hmm. it's got ross pistons uh forged rods it's got a uh ohio crankshaft in it which is uh offset uh it, it it's got the 4250 stroke as opposed to the 4210 stroke a 455 would have um so it works out to be 474 cubic inches okay to do that you you, you go with a different journal size and they put the big block chevy rods in these okay so it's, gotcha. it's kind of a good combination they change the, the piston pin height and uh you know offset grind to crank and uh it, it's a good combination and the well, rods are more affordable so and this has got an edelbrock victor intake victor intake yeah and it's a, a pro systems 1050 cfm car 1050 bonnet. yikes yeah yeah it, monster it runs on 94 octane it which does. is nice okay um i got uh doug's headers on it and uh three inch exhaust yeah full exhaust tailpipes um you know i drive this with street legal tires it, it's gone to the track with drag radials full exhaust and pump gas the best it's done is 1140 1140s yeah that's a big car how much of these weigh well 
they can weigh up to 41, 4,200 pounds. I, I, I would say, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways how they used to come up with the weights where sometimes they didn't include the weights of all the small parts that weighed less than a, a certain amount. But uh -huh. uh, this car, having few options, no power windows, no air conditioning like that, it's, it's around 37, 3,800 pounds. Not bad. Wow. Okay. You know, maybe I saved a couple of pounds because it's got the aluminum metal brock heads on it as opposed to, you know, the cast iron. Yeah. That yeah. That come with it. So. No, that's pretty... And she runs, that's the 11 threes you said 11, it was? 11 40s. 11 40s. Wow, nice. It nice. probably can do a little bit more. but uh, So I assume that uh, when I ask you to go for a ride, we're going to take this one, I think, right? Well, I think we'd go for a little ride in both. But oh, that sounds like good to, to me. Sounds yeah. good to me. You decide which one first. Uh, I think, let's go with the original one first. We'll okay. save this for uh, okay. a little later. Yeah. Okay, so and this you, is... There's a VIN number, so you kind of... This is for the uh, the brown one we are looking at. No, this is the, the silver car. Oh, the silver car. I'm sorry. Code 69 Palladium, Palladium oh, okay. Silver. There we go. And I guess I didn't say that I uh, had actually done that. But that was red when I got it, and it was stripped, and we put it back to the original color, which I liked. I never had a silver Grand Prix before, and I always wanted one, so nice. it's a perfect. There's the 400 with 350 horsepower. And it, it was originally Sudbury. delivered to Sudbury. Yeah, that's cool. And here you have the options. Uh, short list right yep, so yeah a lot of them came with the uh the vinyl roof yeah. rear defog a three two three ratio uh disc brakes was i i've always told that was standard on 69 grand prix but it seems to show here as an option power brakes mm -hmm. uh it was right i'd like to get some red lines to take this to a show sometime because it was originally red striped tires on this car oh that's cool yeah but that's it oh there's a big one additional, additional fuel, fuel for, for delivery, delivery. <laughs> gotta have gotta have some additional fuel so that's funny for the espresso brown car yep. um you can see there's two pages of options here yeah and uh here it shows uh you know the 428 ho engine mm -hmm. that uh is definitely uh clear there's no uh, question on that that's original and it was a gm of canada company car okay. traffic department so whatever the traffic department was but this was um, an executive driven car uh, in its earliest days nice and then it the second owner um, was down here in Windsor and um, actually when I had my 70 Le Mans he he was on my paper route I was just a kid mm -hmm. I was 17 still delivering papers and, and he said let me show you my car and he showed me that it had a 428 because I thought at that time the 350 Pontiac was was pretty powerful and that was cool and uh, this gentleman uh, showed me his car and uh, Actually, I always said I'd like to buy it one day. And uh, in grade 12 auto shop, uh, somebody sitting in front of me said, hey, you know, you know that Grand Prix? I bought it. I'm like, are you serious? He says, I didn't know it went for sale. And he says, well, listen, I just found a, a, a Z28 I want to buy, so I'll, I'll turn around I'll sell this oh. car to you. And then that's when I got it in oh, 1984. okay. So. Nice. These are some of the options here. Yeah, so... Uh, um, Let's see what here. The 428HO is obviously uh, very significant. Right. Uh, vacuum operated door locks were not really <laughs> a good thing. They went, I think they went to electric door locks the next year because there was a lot of problems back in the day with sure. the, trying to do it. Reclining right hand bucket seat. That's a fairly rare option. Uh, huh. Electric power driver's seat. Uh, oh, electric seat, eh? 69, yeah. huh? And it, it did come with the air conditioning as i said but you know it was also the climate control which meant many many more wires and vacuum tubes and and, and whatnot right uh tilt steering um speed warning indicator that's what i'd mentioned already yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. could that's cool. you could set a little dial to a certain speed and if you hit it a buzzer went off it's like a seatbelt buzzer you don't want to set that though no no no, no. <laughs> and Very the important cool. uh Oh, handling, handling package, package and yeah, yeah, additional fuel for delivery. So, anyways, yeah, nice. two now, pages of options now, here. Now, I notice you have your name is on these uh, sheets here. Yeah. How how did we? How did you get the, your name on the sheet? Is this something you can order online yeah. or something? Well, GM Oshawa, um, and there's another name they call it now. But uh, you could early uh, in the mid '90s, I think, when you could first uh, contact them, give them your serial number. And they would send you the information on your car. Oh, is that right? Eh? And there was no okay. charge at first. And then after yeah. a little while, they yeah. were charging. I think it was $40, and I think it's gone up to 80 or, or more. But they can do that for any car that was sold in Canada, I, I believe, for Oldsmobiles, Chevys, whatever. Right, right. Uh, in the States, people order what they could get from the P PHS, Pontiac Historical Society. Okay, so nice. They have a nice package, but... Uh, 
they can't do it for these cars even though these were made in the u.s you have to contact gm us or G gm oshawa oh. so but there's another name for it now it says general motors of canada here and you, when people order them now i see it, it, it has something else different on there i believe so okay cool but, Okay, so we're in one part of your garage here. What's uh, what's going on over here with all these old oils? Well, I uh, I just think old oil cans and whatnot, they're kind of cool. They remind me of being a kid and, uh, you know, um, everything's in plastic now, but, uh, you know, there's some Texaco stuff there. And when I grew up, there was a Texaco gas station right around the corner from me. And that's where I always remember going to get gas for my, my dirt bikes and... Uh, you know, or cars when I first had them. So I, I don't know, it's just kind of cool in the garage. Yeah, sure is. I picked up a few old items here and there, you know, some old Coke machines turn up once in a while. It's like, that'd be kind of cool in the garage, but uh, obviously this is still a work in progress trying to get things, um, you know, organized in here, but uh, we're getting there. And what would this be for? Can that was just cans, old cans. <laughs> a great big old Texaco can on the other side there. That's cool stuff. Now, what you got uh, going on over here, Kim? This was a, uh, a, a pretty nice Grand Prix, and uh -huh. uh, unfortunately, it ended up in an accident, um, not during my ownership, but uh, I was fortunate in being able to get it um, from the owner, and uh, it took a hit that was, if you catch the frame, we, you know, I cut the front that yeah, end I off. Yeah, I see that, but, yeah. Uh, you, can, you can probably get an idea from that frame piece how bad the wow. car was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, a lot of good parts on this and uh, Did you use many to go in your car there any of your cars? Both my cars were fully restored before the, I got this car, you got but this. you know keeping a few parts on the shelf is always a good thing and uh, yeah. Or having parts to, to trade off to somebody else for something I need with something they need for so. sure Now I remember you back in high school. You had a motorcycle that you'd bring to school once in a while Mm -hmm. And uh, is is this it here? No, but it's it's very similar. Back in the school, I had a Kawasaki, and it was a Spectre, but it was a 550. And uh, bringing it to school once in a while, I think one winter I rode one through the entire winter, short of any snowy days. But uh, that, that bike's long gone. <laughs> I remember that for some reason. I don't know why, but I remember mm -hmm. that. That bike's long gone. But uh, you know, in the course of time, I I, I saw some other similar motorcycles come up that uh you know kind of remind me back to the old days so uh, uh one's an 1100 specter and the other one's a 750 specter um, this one here is 750 yeah they're bo both very similar to what i had back in the day except i'm a little bigger and heavier so it's probably better that i got uh motorcycles that are a little bit bigger i don't ride them every day but uh on a nice day i'll go for a ride so yeah yeah what's this one back here that's another 1100 as well it's got a four and a one Kirker on it. That one I've never played it. These two are played it and insured all the time. That one are they? is kind of just a spare and uh, it's, it's sitting there. So I guess yeah. I could do something with it one day. That's cool. But, Man, um, you got a lot of toys. Now you, there's a four wheeler here. Yeah, it's just a little one. The kids can ride that more. Not that I, not to say that I don't fit on it. but uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, you, you know, you make me look small and I usually look bigger than everyone on my videos. <laughs> you make me look small and a golf cart too. Yeah, this is a big well, property. You use it to get around a little bit. The or? golf cart. Well, the golf cart is best at the racetrack, right? Oh, right, right. So okay, that, that's yeah. a must-have at the racetrack. Right. And uh, yeah, and and when it's a hot day like today, and and you have to go from point A to point B, yeah. you don't want to be you don't uh, be walking. You, yeah, you want a little fresh air, and you you can get somewhere quickly. So yeah. Now I noticed you were moving this old. Uh, uh, yeah cash register out of the way on a cart on a, a motorcycle yeah, cart a motorcycle so is it cart. that heavy that uh, you know what you're welcome to try and pick that up no you'd be i'm not you'd be surprised how heavy it is eh? i'll is. take your word for yeah. it that's pretty it's, cool be easy to underestimate really cool yeah now what do we got here kim um this is 73 granville uh, uh -huh. i haven't had it too long couple of months but i couldn't uh, resist getting it it's original paint and it's 44,000 original miles it's a four-door and um, it came with the original window sticker, original bill of sale, a lot of paperwork. Uh, I've got it on the road now and I've taken it for a few drives. Oh yeah, hey, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the size of a condominium, but it's, uh, <laughs> you know, they when they were this big, they drove nice. So. Yeah, yeah, comfortable ride. Let's take a look around this thing. I love those rims, eh? Yeah, yeah. There's, you could have got a big bold pattern uh, rally rim for these, but a lot of people went for these these hubcaps so yeah yeah uh, i added window tint to it and if you open it up 
you pimped it out a little bit. Well, not really. You know, I get a kick out of these cigarette lighters yeah, that are yeah. in the... Uh, for the for the back uh, seat drivers for some reason the gentleman <laughs> who owned this although he spent a fortune on it he only ordered an am radio which is still in it and he did not order power locks i don't know much about these cars at all now are we talking about a luxury car here of some sort back yeah. in the day it, i don't know what year i was. mean it looks like it, it's got some cool things to it yeah i don't know if it was 72 or 73 but the Granville became the uh flagship for pontiac as far oh, as okay. big car and luxury right so for three or four years after this, I, I think they went back to, I don't know if it was a Catalina or something like that, they called their flagship, but this Catalina, was that the flagship. Right. And uh, I noticed there's no uh, pillar here. Yeah, right? no Between B pillar, the... yeah. Huh. So I guess if you're a gangster, you know, they like that because you can swing, yeah, the, you know. If you uh, sticking something out the window, I don't know what it would be, but you, yeah. there's, there's, no, uh, either. there's no post to get in the way, so that's kind of <laughs> interesting. But. Uh, if you look up, and this is what I read, uh, I don't know if it's true, but I, I did read it myself on the internet in more than one spot, but when Jimmy Hoffa disappeared, um, they never found him, but they did find his car in a restaurant parking lot, and yes. the last car he owned was a 73 Granville, just like this, ah, although I understand his was green, so. Yeah, yeah. I was told to look in the trunk of this car when I got Just in case, eh? <laughs> no, I think, uh, I've heard he's uh, somewhere wet. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Who it's, knows? A lot of theories on him, eh? When when I got this car though, and I got the build sheet and all the information and protect the plate and everything that came with it, it was actually built in Oshawa. So it was, eh? Oh, yeah. No kidding. Built in Oshawa, sold in Chatham originally. So very cool. But it's got some patina. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's a 455 four barrel, which I have to say runs much better than I would have expected. It's still got the points uh, distributor in it. It's it's very unmolested, uh, but it was a uh, a single exhaust car uh, the exhaust the the, the cross member has the double cutout if you had dual exhaust and i did add dual exhaust to it you did yeah you've only had it two months you said two months maybe two and a half and you've already modified it yeah it, <laughs> down, not, it, it needed the exhaust the exhaust on it wasn't so good and yeah. i said we're gonna put uh, well it's stainless steel dual exhaust we put on it and nice. sounds good runs good so nice it's got ac it's got ac but it doesn't work so oh, okay oh Like a big block for sure. 
performance or car. Higher performance. Higher performance car. <laughs> higher performance. This is the one that you put a tack in. This got a, I put a in dash tack in this one and I put factory gauges in instead of the uh, idiot lights. Nice. Well, I, I, I can already feel what's coming with this one just by the sound of it. Hey guys hope you enjoyed that one kim big thank you uh mr pontiac here you've got some great stuff these cars are amazing appreciate it very much on one of the hottest days uh and and because you're so tall you made me look small in a video for once yeah. i appreciate that <laughs> but uh, anyway guys if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up please subscribe leave me some comments and we'll see you on the next one